Alright, let's see. Yeah. Bear in mind that I'm not pushing it in as far. And you're like covering I'm covering it up with my hand so it doesn't, you know, clump clutch onto this machine. If that clumped onto that, would that just ruin it completely? No, it wouldn't. It's a magnet. But clearly it's it's strong, okay? And if you have a look, even from here, it has a significant effect. Well, it did before. <laughs> okay, ready? Alright, so if I bring the north in. Clearly, I'm getting a, a much bigger, much bigger movement in the in the um, voltmeter. Simply because this magnet is about 20 times stronger. <laughs> okay. okay, so clearly the stronger the magnet, the more movement you get. And the reason why strength is you know, directly correlated is because uh, the stronger the magnet, the higher the magnetic flux density, i.e. the magnetic strength, the magnetic field strength. And as a result, you have more flux lines passing through a given area. It comes back to density, doesn't it? Right? Was it you? You were used to before. It comes back to density. It comes back to the density of the actual uh, flux lines. Any questions? Okay, so that's strength and distance. Let's see what relative motion has. What do think relative mo movement has? Okay, so I'm going to move it very slowly. I'm going to have a look at the effect on the ammeter, and then I'm going to move it pretty fast and see what happens. Not much. Slower you move, the slower it will change. Clear, yeah, this is not much, yeah. not a lot. Okay, so let's move faster and see what happens. <laughs> Clearly it's bigger. Yeah. Well it is bigger, right? Probably not clear, but it is bigger. <laughs> right, the reason why it's not as big is because it doesn't look as big, it's changing quickly between two uh, large poles. Right, so for that reason it doesn't look like it's going that far, whereas before it was quite slow. So it looks like it's increasing significantly. But in this case, it's actually increasing. Okay, so slow movement. So not a lot, right? Still the same. Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's enough. Yeah, you see that's bigger? As opposed to this. That's bigger. So clearly the faster you move it, the larger the EMF produced. And the reason why is because there is a fact that well probably not a reason why, but uh, the factor of the rate of change of the flux actually occurs in the equation for EMF. And actually the reason why uh, the, larger the larger EMF occurs at a higher flux, or at a, at a faster movement, is because you're cutting more flux lines. And it all comes down to how many flux lines you cut per second. You cut more flux lines, you get a larger EMF produced, so on and so forth. And here clearly if you move faster, more flux lines will be cut. So this is a simple DC motor, okay, and all that's happening is that when I spin this, there's a coil moving within, magnetic, within, a, within a magnetic field, okay, and this coil as it spins, cuts flux lines, as it cuts these flux lines, an EMF is produced, since it's a complete circuit, a current is thus produced, and this current will be right here, okay, so let's, let's see what happens at different varying speeds. Getting a reading? Yeah. What is it? <laughs> it's gone up to, oh, no, up, one, yeah, it's like changing. Yeah, it's changing. Okay, now it's zero. Oh, two. <laughs> two. Oh, it's going negative. <laughs> That's okay. Let the, let the class recap. Okay. What what's the reading? Negative one. About one. About one. Negative one and a half, right? Yeah. It's because I'm turn it insane. Like, maybe if I move it in the opposite direction. So it'll be positive now. Oh, it's positive, it's positive. What is it? 
about one. All right, about one. Yeah. You can, you can you can use the floor function, get rid of any decimals. Okay. Just whatever's the first number. One. Yeah. Okay. Faster. Two. You attach it to a light bulb. Yes, we will do that next. So, because I'm not the best fisher in the world, <laughs> right? You're, you're not seeing it move up to a great, a humongous uh, value, right? Um, what is it at the moment? Yeah, it's about eight, right? Clearly, the faster I move it, the faster it goes. The, the higher it goes. If I move it slowly, what's it about now? Zero point five. Yeah, zero point five. Zero, essentially. Faster. One, two, and then. Okay, so this one's got 600 turns, this one's got 300 turns. Let's see the difference with a different number of turns. What do you expect? Which one will produce a higher EMF? I'd say, you know, everything else being the same, which one produces the high, higher EMF? More? Yeah, you expect more. Just okay, so clearly the less number of turns you have, the smaller the number of turns, the weaker the current produced due to the EMF being produced being weaker. Okay? And you guys should have expected that because that N pops up in the EMF equation. That N is the number of coils. That the phi dt is this problem term there, that's just the rate of change of the flux. Okay? So that N tells you the more coils you have, the larger your EMF. Let me show this second. 